Hello, folks. We're live, and this is Examine Any RTD, Ready to Drink, Can Cocktail. I'm in Louisiana with Louisiana beer or flavored ready to drink things. <laughs> James P. Madonna is in New Jersey, and we may have some other people joining us. John in LA is trying to get off of work to join us. He told me a few days ago he already bought a canned cocktail. So I have one from Canada. And they just hit the market here about two years ago. And uh, they, but the company's been around since 1957 when a man named Vincenzo uh, Geloso immigrated to Canada, Quebec, and he started Geloso Beverage Group. So here's what I've got it's called <laughs> the original Club Tales Watermelon Margarita. <coughs> There you go. Ten percent. It's in a tw a sixteen ounce can. It's malt beverage with natural flavors and certified color. J the taste of summer just sweet. It says in the can, the taste of summer sweetness just adds salt. Well, I'm not going to add salt. And the disclosure on the side says flavored ale. So it's a flavored ale from Laval, Quebec Province, Canada. And I'll show you all something on the website real fast. And then we're going to go to James. He's going to show us his uh, item. We'll maybe look, probably look up the website for his. Um, here's the website. It says, what kind of alcohol is Club Tales? It's crafted from a proprietary fermented malt base like traditional beer, but with an extra kick. We spend a lot of time perfecting the taste profile so our products taste like an actual spirit-based cocktail. Is high fructose corn syrup used in the making of Club Tails? Club Tails are triple filtered, and that creates the cleanest, best taste uh, malt base, giving our products a natural spirit-like finish. We use only cane sugar, never any high fructose corn syrup. And they're considered vegan friendly, if that's important to you. Um, so the, now they're coming out with these seltzer styles. I'm going to show you what I've got on the website real quick. Okay, if I can get it to StreamYard slows down your system, man. All right. Here we go. Before we start checking our products out, James is going to give us some musical. But once we describe what we got, and he's going to ring us in. Um, a simple, sweet, and refreshing. The simple, sweet, refreshing flavors speak for themselves. So they, they're encouraging you to dress it up, you know, but I'm not going to dress mine up. You can get it in the uh, variety pack of 12 ounce cans or the pint cans. Uh, and they're showing a margarita glass, you know, with a watermelon wedge in there and everything like that. All right. So I'll stop sharing now. Now, James is going to tell us about his product. Oh, OK. First, a little uh, little percussion. OK. Okay. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. All right. The website is drink. Cacti.com, all one word. Drink cacti, and I have um, by cacti brand. I have a lime blue agave spiked um, seltzer. I did the best I could to find a cocktail in a can. Okay. okay. Uh, I wasn't gonna buy a six pack or a twelve pack of of this low, you know. Uh, although it might be really good. Might be 7% alcohol by volume. Cacti is made with 100% premium blue agave from Mexico. 
natural flavors for a refreshing and bold taste. Agave and lime, spiked, spiked seltzer. All right. Cac, drinkcacti.com. All right. And, uh, oh, I, uh, I thought it was interesting. I love lime. I love lemon. And um, agave, well, I, I've had agave in, in the booze form, and I've had agave syrup on my pancake. So I have nothing against agave. Uh, so this is it. It's a big oh. one pint, um, one pint, nine fluid ounces. Well, tw 25 fluid ounce can, but 7%, you know, it's a, it's, it's a guzzler's delight, especially in, in hot weather, which we had today. Uh, well, we had for the past several days, and uh, it looks refreshing. You know, lime, it's great. Oh, 100%, 100% a premium blue agave from Mexico. Uh, Freshing bold taste. Now, what are the other flavors they have? Agave, pineapple, there's pineapple, lime, and strawberry. Yeah, I got the lime. Produced by Meadow, Meadow Creek Beverage Company in association with Anheuser-Busch. Uh-oh. All uh -oh. right. Those rascals have to get their oxygen, so this oxygen tentacles and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess they came to... Uh, I guess they came to uh, Meadow Creek and, t and told them, we got an offer you can't refuse. Okay. We will buy. But they you probably have the production ability to get Meadow Creek. Oh, you're a family owned business? Right. Well, it doesn't say they're owned by them. They just said. They say everybody's got a price for Anheuser Busch. What is your price, sir? Right. <laughs> oh, it doesn't oh, say they're won't. owned by. It doesn't say they're owned. Then say their own. They just say in association, but you know what that's going to lead to. But anyway, uh, you know, well, you know, the family-owned business will say, "Hey, we've been doing this for decades. We have a long family tradition of making the finest product." Ah, how about another two hundred grand? Ah, I'm 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 Right. I mean, eventually, you're gonna you're gonna get you're gonna you're gonna find their price. Right. So I'm gonna open mine, and uh, I got a black tab opener and um, watermelon margarita. Now, uh, oh, man. humidity is brutal. I know that I know that Anheuser Busch has been doing a lot of collaborations lately. Like uh, they did this recent collaboration with MD Twenty Twenty Mogan David to produce a beer-based wine mimic. All right, now here's mine. Look at this pink thing. Oh, now look. That's coming from the food coloring, of course. Now, um, it's translucent. I haven't had this in a couple of years. Now, when my friend David tried these, he said, well, they're too sugary, all that cane sugar they use. At least they're not using the fruct high fructose corn syrup. But he thought that the watermelon was the best of the lot. So you're not going to get much head of foam. You're not going to get much, you know, lacing. But what right. they're doing is they're taking beer and they're distilling it down to produce it into a vodka like vodka like substance and then they're adding the flavor into it. So cheers to you. Cheers. They they should call that flamingo juice. It's a, it's a very, very pleasant, colorful, artificial <laughs> a hue, an artificial hue. Flamingo juice. Flamingo juice. <laughs> Smells like watermelon uh type thing, I guess. Um it is natural flavor, so it's got to come from some kind of watermelon puree, I suppose. Um, now, um, the taste. <laughs> it's pretty sweet, so they've got it. The, the Louisiana sugar producers are probably uh, very happy to be in business with the club tails people. Um, apparently, the number one rice purchase by the way and just saying this as an aside the biggest purchaser of rice in the united states from what i've read is anheuser-busch but um 
and they've got certain rice farms that only do business with them, you know, because um, they got a juiced in connection. But anyway, uh, same thing with barley and hops. But um, this thing, you can pick up the alcohol and it, it, it you, you would almost think it has vodka added being that it's 10%, but it isn't. It's all beer. Um, it's from Canada. Um, it's got a sharp tartness. It's got that little liqueur flavor. And um, it's a un, it, as sweet as it tastes. The finish is on the drying side. I guess you wouldn't want it to finish too sweet, and then it would become like oh, you wouldn't be able to. Take. You could drink one of these and get away with it. You'd feel fine, relax, mellow. It'd be a sweet treat. If you drink two, you're gonna get sick. You're gonna be really sick. You're gonna be inebriated and ill. All right, now we're gonna go to James and John and Neely. Come on now. All right. Come on down. Da, 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 da. Well, I don't want to prejudge it right away, but it smells like cat piss with a hint of lime. Oh, no. Uh, but, it, you know, it has a sake look to it. Does it, yeah. have, a, does it have a production uh, origin on the can, like where it's produced? Yeah, let me, let me check. Let me check it out. Yeah, East Coast, East Coast humidity. Um, it's like uh, uh, Gulf Coast humidity, not as bad as Gulf Coast, but no. All right, beer produced, well, they call it a beer. Beer produced by Meadow Creek Beverage in association with Anheuser-Busch St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, where was it canned, right? Uh Contains one percent juice. Yeah, when I said a hint of lime, I wasn't kidding. One percent. Blue agave with natural flavors. Blah blah blah. No, it doesn't mention any okay. other. Okay. Yeah, it could, it, could, it could be Newark, New Jersey, for all we know. It could be the water. Could be from the Newark Bay. You never know. It used to be a beer years ago that went belly up. A brewery called Pride of Newark. Of course, you couldn't say that now with a straight face. <laughs> right. Maybe, maybe the terror. Of yeah, uh, uh, Cor uh, Cor uh, Senator Cory Booker, when he was mayor of Newark, did absolutely nothing positive for the city. I, I remember what it, uh, you know his term. Right. Yeah. It's like Bill De Blasio. Yeah, if you listen to Cory Booker talk, he was like the, the genius of Newark, you know? Yeah, his eyes are always like, ooh, 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 like somebody's ticked, somebody's giving him a, a prostate exam. Like he's always, ooh, ooh. you know, like he gets so enthusiastic. But Newark was a, was a, um, a, a fecal matter hole. I, I, I'll use nice words on it. On your show, a fecal, a fecally uh, uh, in, 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 uh, induced uh, hole. Anyway, well, I wish the hell they put more lime in here because there certainly is a hint. I mean, come on, one percent. What about the aroma? I only got the aroma when I first. Got smelled it it um has the sweetness of agave the beverage ramble. we're gonna get back to you beverage ramble we're gonna get back to you it has very faint aroma and that includes the one percent of lime but you know it has the um the sweetness very faint sweetness of agave so uh, i think this company I don't know who to blame. I don't know. Jigsaw puzzles make me nervous, like playing Jenga. You know, Jenga, it's like you're yeah. yeah, it's, it's nerve wracking. Uh, I think they're using the cheap filler of uh, whatever grain it is to give you the 7% alcohol, and the flavoring is very minute. Very, very uh, microscopic, to say the least. Um, I saw that product around, but I never bought it. I didn't know if it would be worth buying, so I'm glad you're reviewing it. 
it's not worth buying and i feel bad that it comes in such a a big can because i was hoping it was it would be a little can so i can be done with it but it's a big can it would be nice if it was a big can of something great yeah, right but uh what are you gonna do there, there, there were there were some products that were available in one can uh but most of them were not and could you imagine if i took the plunge the nest tea plunge and got a whole and got six or 12 of these oh, there? No. i would have been upset i've seen a lot of those james around in my in when i lived in mobile um in that area and i've seen a lot of them here since i moved to georgia and i don't know i uh, doesn't look too appealing to me, you know. I mean, but I gotta, I gotta tell y'all something. I haven't been too impressed with any of those seltzer beer, seltzer beer products. To tell you the truth, I mean, it's not, it's but not horrible. Where I'm gonna just dump the can immediately. It's not. It's it's mediocre, and that's being generous. But <laughs> will I ever get any of these again? No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. You know, you're taking a chance uh, with a new product. Uh, uh, I mean, they don't say wonderful things about it. It's not like it, it's, you know, infused with the passion fruit or whatever and mango and this and that. Or, you know, I, I mean, if it was really exotic, like a lot of those IPAs, then um, I would say, oh, this might be pleasurable. You know, uh, the only thing I hated more than this was those, what is Micheladas? The one with the tomato and the hot oh, pepper, oh, pepper yeah. mixed with the beer. Yeah, I, I, I didn't care for that. I haven't tried those yet, uh, sadly. I, I've, oh. I've been kind of on the fence about those chiladas. Maybe, well, yeah. maybe I should try it. Maybe. Now, if, some, if, if somebody got a, cl a clamato or a, or a, or a, um, a good tomato, a Sacramento tomato juice with some some hot sauce that put vodka in and, and gave me a Bloody Mary. Then I would say, "Ah, oh, this is great." Yeah, this is great. It's a Bloody Mary, but but to have it with the beer, you know, already uh, whatever yeah. they do, pasteurization, whatever they do to it. Anyway, here's what I bought earlier this month in Arlington, Texas. It's called. It's, I haven't tried it yet because I only bought one. Brewed in California, Los Angeles, California. Estrella, Estrella Jalisco. That means Jalisco Star, Jalisco Star. Yes. And it is tropical chamoy, chamoy, which apparently oh. chamoy is like candied, spicy sugar, like on fruit and stuff. Chamoy. Well, I've seen the fruit. I've seen the chamoy fruit in, in the market, in the in Spanish uh, uh, farmer's markets. Yeah, chamoy michelada. Made with clam tomato, so this is one of those tomato juice, clam broth, beer things, and it's supposed to have this chamoy thing going on it. And there's a big essay, big essay on the back. But uh, we tried the, uh, I tried the spicy pina, pina from this company was well, a collaboration between two Anheuser Busch owned company. Oh. Spicy pina was very nice, and and my friend David. Like the pineapple, mango. So the the next one is the chamoy, which I'm going to do soon. But now the beverage ramble is going to tell us about his product if he shows up. There's his nice blinds. There's his blinds and curtain. They're in I Georgia. Like the blinds. Uh, eventually, they the string wears out, but I like. I yeah, like it. it does dry rot. Now, Jane. Now, James. Beverage ramble moved to Georgia. He lives in Georgia now. Georgia. I thought he was in Alabama. He's not in Alabama no more. He was in Mobile, Mobile, right? Yeah. On, he moved, the, to, the, he moved yeah. to the he moved to the Empire State of the South. Uh, so, so he's near John and Nilly. Not far from him. Nope, not far. But, he, but he's not in the dry. He's not in the dry county. I I really don't know. I don't know either. Hope not. Yeah, you're right there, Aaron Chand. I, I'm not a fan either. Not a fan, not a fan, not a fan. Well, I just picked it because I figured it'd be an interesting topic. Squad drinks. These religiously, huh? Oh, yeah, they do. Pizza. Yeah. 
tomato piece. No, they, they put celery, I think. Stalk oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll get back to uh, Beverage Ramble. He's off thinking about the uh, stock market or something. Now, yeah. he's, rambling. Uh, he's rambling about something in the background. Uh, he's rambling on. Now, oh, how he rambled. Oh, how he rambled. <laughs> Now, wild card Wednesday tonight. I, I was told by a source there is no wild card Wednesday, and uh, you should be you should be flooded with a tsunami of comments. Right, right. And, well, all, and all the guys that were going to join wild card could have joined could have run out to the store and gotten a, a RTD. I think uh, now. Uh, okay, let's go to this one that I'm sipping on. All right. To tell you the truth, because I like to deal with the truth. This is an honest. That's right. That's chop down the cherry tree. You you cannot tell a lie. And if you disagree with me, I'll immediately kick you out of my group. Now, <laughs> but um, because I'm honest. Um. Okay, what do I like about it? Well, I like the fact that they don't use high fructose corn syrup. And that they use natural cane sugar. I like the fact that they. Um, I like the fact that they. It's a family-owned company. I like the fact that it's inexpensive. I only paid a dollar forty-nine for this, in pint can. I like the fact that the company watched my videos and tried to track me down in my own town, but they didn't find me. And they gave, but they gave the distributor a cap. And I still have that cap. I could go get it. So I thought to myself, well, and the company was telling the distributor, wow, he's he's way down in Louisiana and he's reviewing our um, flavored beers and he likes them. And they were all excited about it. And uh, I asked the distributor guy, Eric, I said, well, where was this man from that was looking for me? He said, oh, he was from Quebec. He comes down about twice a year to check on things. I said, oh, wow. So it's too bad that I didn't get to meet the guy, but um, they did give me the cap, the original Club Tales. But I also like the fact that the tartness is nice. Now, what do I not like about it? I don't really like flavored beers, okay? That's a personal issue. It's They're too sweet and sugary and all. I mean, I never drink, the, I re, literally, I never drink these kind of things unless I'm doing a review. So it's really not, I don't drink punch. You know, if I went to a wedding, you know how they have fruit punch at a wedding and then a spike punch. I, I mean, I could drink this just like the, the punch at a wedding because it's the same concept. So I could see people at a wedding drinking this and having a good time, and then like an hour and a half later, it would deteriorate into like some big group fight with the mother-in-law crying and the bride crying. And so you could see you could see it developing into like a negative thing. But um, the mother-in-law oh, at, at a wedding reception, oh, they don't keep quiet. <laughs> right. So, uh, <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't like to bring products down on a score because it's not my style because I don't think that's fair because I know a lot of people like this kind of stuff because they're trying to get diabetes and obesity and shorten their lifespan and all that. And I, I get that. But um, I would just rather drink an ale like you said, a double IPA or something like that, you know. But um, for what it is, and I hate what it is, but for what it is, I do think it deserves an A, uh, most excellent. I would say about a 95 for a sugary sweet cock. And, and I've drunk cocktails before, and they're damn sweet, excuse my language. And I don't know how people can drink those things every day. I mean, it seems like, you know, how could you drink all this sugar-laced, simple syrup-laced booze stuff all the time? I mean, it seems like it would be detrimental to your health. But people love them. But yeah, I'll say 94. It, it seems fair. But uh, if I never drank it again, it would be too soon. So uh, um, 
keep up the good work, Jaluso, but uh, I'm just not going to be part of your, you know, your world, more or less. Now, uh, James is going to give us a score, and then we're going to go to the beverage ramble, maybe. Oh, all right. Okay. Drinkcacti.com. Uh, all right. I would say this tastes like. I'm trying a, to set up a special this, screen, you know. There you go. This, the totem pole. This tastes yeah. like a spiked seltzer with a little tiny lime wedge, which some bartenders do. And they like to give you something like this little, like the cheap ass is a little, little tiny little, about the half the size of a die, and they squeeze it into your drink. That's what yeah. this tastes like, a, a spiked seltzer with a little itty bitty, teeny weeny uh, lime wedge. And uh, I'm not saying it's horrible where I'm gonna dump it real fast. It was 97 degrees up here with a humidity. So I'm not gonna dump it. I'm gonna drink it and I feel a little buzz coming over. Maybe it's from all the Barcelo rum I was drinking before. Oh, that might have something to do with it. <laughs> yeah, the añejo, the añejo, yeah, aged. Anyway, uh, well, that felt good in this heat. It splashed on my leg. S sweetness is 25, I'm 25 years old. Let me tell you, if I was in high school with the brain I have now, knowing that I couldn't really get in trouble except sent to the principal's office, you know, you know what kind of mayhem I would be involved in? Anyway, I wish I could turn back the, the, crock, the clock. Anyway, uh, the score I will give this as far I've had a, other uh, spike seltzer. I only had one other spike seltzer before, and don't ask me what it was because I'm not a fan. I would, uh, among spike seltzers, I would give this 77 Sunset Strip. I will give okay. it a 77 out of 100. That's fair. That's fair. Now, the beverage ramble is going to showcase whatever he's got and then give us a score. Okay. Hope you like Georgia. Hope you like Georgia. All right. He moved from the Gulf Coast to the East Coast. So he betrayed the Gulf Coast and embraced the East Coast. Yeah. Can you all, can you all hear me pretty good? Yeah. 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 So Savannah is a very historic place. Yes, it is. Um, actually, I'm here. Um, actually, so uh, yeah, so um, I'm in Georgia now. I've moved from Mobile to Georgia. Uh, hopefully, I'll be doing some reviews with John and Neely. So hopefully soon, uh, uh, joint reviews. But um, but John is on the other side of Noonan, and I'm out here in Douglasville. So I won't be here long. You know, um, just kind of laying my head down until. I'll find me an apartment. So is that, is that near Swanee? I have a friend in Swanee. Yes. My brother lives in Swanee. Yes. My brother lives in Swanee. Uh, my younger brother, his wife and his three kids. And uh, my older brother, Dan, lives with his wife and three children in Alpharetta. So Alpharetta. That's yeah. near Mar Marietta also, right? Very, very oh. true. Very deep. So what, so, town, what town are you? I'm currently right now living uh, I live in right now living in Douglasville. I'm staying at my mm -hmm. uncle's. Um, hopefully I'll find a place a little more closer to my job. My job is over in Norcross. Uh, oh yeah. 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 I know where that is. That's right off the interstate. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so best, of course the traffic has been a big, big, <laughs> big deal. You know, this land traffic, 285, 20, 85, uh, 75. It is just chaos all the time trying to get around, but Hey, you know, it is what it is. So. I wonder if the, I wonder if the famous Swanee River is near Swanee, Georgia. Um, it po possibly may also run into the Chattahoochee River, which Chattahoochee. So, yeah, Chattahoochee. Now, the, Swanee, the Swanee runs down all into Florida and goes to the Gulf of Mexico. I'm almost certain. Oh wow! Yeah. They should have riverboat gambling on the Swanee River. I think they should. Oh, all gambling, it should be fun. So the Hudson River. Uh, Here's the question for you. Yeah. What's the question? You don't see the screen. Oh, you don't see the screen. It says beverage ramble. Are, Are you, you okay? okay? Yeah, I'm okay, guys. Um, I'm doing good. Like I said, um, new beginnings. As you know, we all 
need to do a reset in life, you know, and I, I'm, I'm doing this reset right now. And right now, kind of uh, perfect timing right now. Of course, the fourth is coming up. So I'm going to be hopefully the weather will cooperate, um, but uh, probably spending some time going to both of my brother's houses and just hanging out with them, with the family, you know, grilling, cooking out, whatever, and doing a lot of drinking and uh, having a good time. Hey, Jean. Yeah. Bad, but the bad thing is you won't be two hours from me anymore. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. But I'm planning on making a trip to New Orleans sometime. I would say if my mom and my dad come Thanksgiving or Christmas, you know, I, I will be making a trip back down there somewhere in between those dates. Hey, so. Jeremy, sometimes when you're talking and I'm watching a video, you look like Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm serious. He did lose an hour in time, by the way, when he moved. That's, That's right. You lost an hour in time. That's been a big adjustment. Everybody says, you know, when you, uh, even no matter how you travel, you know, when you get to a certain area, even 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 we are an hour behind, that does affect your sleeping patterns and does affect your body a lot. Yeah. Don't feel bad, Jean, because some people say I look like David Spade. Okay, now. <laughs> <laughs> um, tonight, <laughs> I'll leave that alone. Tonight, I am drinking the Mix Long Island Iced Tea Cocktail. Um, I think I did a review of this, and I think Jay, you might have done a review of there. Yes, I did. All three yeah. flavors, right? The the margarita and whatnot. So, picked this up at the QT service station yesterday, and quick, had it quick time. Quick time. Quick, yeah, quick time. Yep, quick yeah. time service station. <laughs> yes, Man, there are many of those, as well as Racetrack, which is based here in Georgia. Um, but um, so I picked it up 12% ABV, one guy iced tea, and so far I have been enjoying this. Um, uh, I think I may have done a review of the margarita myself. Um, the green label, the green label, the green label. So there's the lemonade yellow label, and there's the orange, which is the orange label, but, obviously. But, but not to get into this, I mean, I think what there was a I don't know. So I was watching something. I think it might have been one of the uh, channels, maybe the Food Channel, or maybe something online. Now there's so much dabble. I think it might have been, you know, open them free, over the air sub channels that PBS, whatever. And they were talking about all the the laces, all the recent trend of drinking and how now people are kind of bypassing beer, drinking more of these pre mixed cocktails like this. Yeah. And, you yeah. Know, and and the um the but the Budweiser Limeritas and whatnot. How people are just. And the wines, and you know what? I, I don't blame them. I mean, you know, get everything in the can, twelve percent, and if you want to infuse it yourself to give it more of a kick, then you you're willing to do that. I think this, the club tails, um, which is also club has been around for a long time. Let's just let's just call it what it is. Club tails been around forever, um, but now we just, we, just got it. we but we only got it the last couple of years. Look at this comment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Diamond John, <laughs> Diamond John from um, the guy from um, uh, 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 Shark Tank, Shark Tank. So, okay, yeah. so you say you say the original Club Tail has been around a long time, and I know it has been since the 1960s, but I, we only got it in Louisiana the last couple of years. All right, yeah. but anyway, show us yeah. your show us your flavored ale from. Uh, we're, we're drinking the Long Island iced tea. What I'm drinking right now, as you can see. From Rochester, it's this. from Rochester, New York, and it's owned by a company called uh, it's a company called Mark Anthony Bev, uh, Brands International, and they're the people that make Mike's Hard and Mike's Harder. Right. And uh, so anyway, no MXT, is, MXT no. is from Ro Rochester, New York, and we know where what beer is coming out of Rochester. Well, of course, Genesee, of course, which I'm sure they're probably using their brewery. Maybe also the people that own Gen Genesee, what, Florida Ice? Or whomever out um, of Costa Rica, yeah. right? Yeah. So I'm sure that maybe they might have their, you know, hands in this. But uh, but so far I'm sipping this, and this is really giving me a nice little buzz right now. Twelve percent. I mean, really nice, smooth, just easy drinking, and just you know, coming off work and getting out of that Atlanta traffic. Um, this yeah. is not too bad. Um, again, I've always been very leery about stuff, you know, like this. I always said, you know. If I want a cocktail, let me fix my own margarita, whatever. But you know what? If everything's in the can for you and, you know, saves you the time and effort, why not? You know, iced tea, Cayman's Jack, another one. 
um, which that's I also another one, that's another one from Mark Anthony Group. Mm -hmm. Now show us the the uh, color real fast. It looks like iced tea. There's it does. Here's the long iced tea, twelve percent, and like I said, so I you know took it out in my little cooler, baby cooler I have here, and really cold, and it is quite good. Um, it is you know very flavorful, very mild. It's not overly sweet. It's just right, and there's the right amount of alcohol. And again. For those of you who want to add a little more, if you want to give a little more kick to it, go right ahead. But uh, I think the 12%, I think this is just fine for me. So, but if you drink like three of these, you'll probably be like, okay. Oh, no, no. no, no. We're, hey, no. Let me go, let's go jump in the pool, everybody, with our clothes on. No. Oh, man, yeah, my cell phone was in my pocket. Darn. <laughs> yeah, my, my brother did that in his in-ground pool. He he forgot that, that his uh, smartphone was in his pocket, the idiot. He had a smartphone in his pocket. His daughter says, Daddy, come in the pool, come in the pool. And he jumps in. And he's <laughs> yeah. But luckily they have a machine at Staples that sucks all the moisture out of your phone. So yeah, that worked out. But I mean, hey, he got wet, he got cooled, and everybody had a great time. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna give my score right now for this one. I'm gonna give it an A. I think these mixed cocktails are very good. And again, for people out there, you know, going to the beach, you know, going to a cookout, you know, these are perfect to have, you know, despite the the, the naysayers that talk, you know, who will say, you know, why you you know, especially those snobs who you know, don't bring this. This all looks poor, it's a like poor man. But look, this is a really good cocktail, very enjoyable. Everything you want, you don't have to do anything. Just make sure you freeze it, make sure it's ice cold, pour it in your glass. Not a beer glass that I have, but you know, pour it in your glass and you'll have a good time. So I'm gonna give this an A. Okay. Uh hold on a second. I'm gonna type in some information. So James, uh, you have yours is called cacti cactus, right? Cacti. Um, it's called uh, uh cacti. Cacti uh a, a lime, agave spike self. Agave spiked seltzer. Seven point five, right? No, just no, just seven. Uh, okay, seven percent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it, it's the lime flavored one. Agave spiked seltzer, cacti brand. Okay. Very clever of them to think of it. <clears throat> So um, hopefully y'all got the chance to see my rehash of the Molson Triple X. Um, I uploaded it and um, when did you do that? Um, I uploaded it uh, Tuesday. I think it should be on YouTube. I don't recall seeing that. Okay, now, uh, well, wait, did I? No, no I don't think I did. Now, what is your score? What is your number score for this? Uh, for this beer, uh, for this cocktail, I'm going to give it an A. So I guess that will be, what, 93, 94? All right. We'll go with 93. Yeah. Now I'm thinking about corned beef hash because he said hash. Oh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, mine was 77. Not not because cause I just thought of the old show, 77 Sunset Street. But I, I don't want to give it a high yeah. 77 out of 100. Let me, let me update this. I put 77 out of 10. Sorry about that. 7 out of 100. But, yeah, I, I did it. I don't think it deserves a, a, a decent score. So I, that would be a... a hey, what do I always say? You got to call it You got to call it as you see it. That would be a, a C, a C, not a D. A yeah, a C. A C, like so-so. You can tolerate it, but you wouldn't want to drink it. Yeah, yeah. I remember when the teachers used to put those little stickers on our on our work. Those little, uh, with that, yeah, you know, that was, when I was young. Warsteiner, I've had Warsteiner. It's uh, not bad. Very popular in Germany. Yeah, and if you, if you read the history of Warsteiner, it's pretty interesting because what happened with them? They were bought out by Anheuser Busch InBev, and then the family, the family felt bad about it. And about two years later, they told Anheuser-Busch, could we buy it back? And they said, yeah. And so they bought it back and it's family owned again. I bet that's the only time a family ever bought something back from a corporation. 
Do they still make St. Pauli, girl? Yes. Okay. But it's not so co common. Kind of. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, kind of died out. Yeah. That, that, that wheat beer, that was very aromatic. That was Aventinus. Aventinus? Aventinus, yeah. Aventinus, yeah. Very aromatic. German now, I'm going to do a... I'm going to do a promo, y'all, for a minute. Tomorrow morning, and I appreciate James posting those and uh, everything, his food. Um, I have two products that are, well, they're kind of like what James is drinking. You could drink them, but then you have to ask why would you drink them. But anyway, um, this is Four Queens from New Jersey, it's bought, blended and bottled in New Jersey, Scobieville, New Jersey, which is some little village really on the side of a state highway. But it's um, 101 <laughs> proof. If you buy this in New Jersey, it's probably about $9, but in Louisiana, it's 12 because, well, it's not common here. So we, I had to pay 11.99 for it. Um, apparently it's been on the market for about 80 years and it was previously bottled in Philadelphia, but the company Casser got bought out by the uh, Laird's family. Laird's is famous for making Applejack, but they also make this Four Queens. And they make a product in Eastern Pennsylvania out of this stuff called Boilo. Boilo, it's a Christmas drink. It's going to go up against Kentucky Bow from Heaven Hill. Well, let me tell you something about Heaven Hill. They make good straight bourbon. But they even admitted on an interview, I saw a video interview, that if they make a bourbon that doesn't come out right, <laughs> they cast it off and blend it with grain spirits and make these blended whiskeys. And so this is Kentucky Bow, which means sort of like Kentucky Boyfriend or Beautiful Kentucky. If this was your boyfriend or girlfriend, you'd break up immediately. <laughs> this thing, it's got two horseshoes and four <laughs> It's got four medals that you know it never won. <laughs> this thing has been on the market since 1949, and I don't know who in the world is drinking it, but I bought it in Mississippi. But there's also a Kentucky Bow Black Label, which is a straight bourbon. Straight bourbon, so I'd, I'd be curious to try it. Now, James had good luck with the uh, Heaven Hill Black Label and the green, green Label, but that's coming tomorrow morning. So uh, that's the promo. And then I'll show y'all one more thing. This is pretty interesting. I'm going to show y'all one more thing. And then I'm going to go back to the comments. Watch this. That was funny, though. Four medals that I never won. That, yeah. was, that was funny. They, they self-proclaimed uh, award winners. That's like that's like you, Jay Terrio, giving yourself an honorary PhD. Right. When I saw that. Kentucky bow for six dollars and forty nine cents in Mississippi. I thought to myself, for six forty nine, I bet you this is going to be uh, interesting. Anyway, I kind of like the label though. It's, it's cheap though. Oh, it's this, but there's a lot of bums that no. All right, never mind. All right, anyway. Uh, uh, <laughs> now here's some good. Here's some something good. <laughs> I talk about Mathern's grocery store a lot. They have a, a, a market here in this town. They have one. There's two in Baton Rouge, and there's one in uh, between here in Baton Rouge. It's family owned. Father and the son own it. I was talking to the son today. The son. He's about 45 years old, 43 years old. I guess 43. 10 years younger than me. He says, uh, hey. I want to show you something. I said, okay. I didn't know what he was talking about. He said, you ever heard of Parish Grand Reserve? I said, I heard of it. I even tried it before. He said, well, I got a bottle. Here it is. It's wax topped. You know, the coated with wax. He said, I got this bottle. It's 10% alcohol, barley wine. He said, I've been saving it for nine years. Oh, wow. Wow. And he said, I'm going to give it to you, and I want you to do a good review. But then he said, no. 
He said he wanted it to be a good score. I can't guarantee it's going to be a good score. This is 2012 vintage bottle number 115. This is bottled in Broussard, Louisiana. And I, I said, wow, can I say who gave it to me? He said, yeah, you could tell people who gave it to you. So what a gift, right? And you don't want to know the price for this single bottle. And you do not want to know the price. So that was a great gift, y'all. And I did not ask for it. He just stumbled upon me and he said, it's been in this cool office. He had it in his grocery store office for nine years, air conditioned, what you call cellared, I guess. So, wow. Now that's coming tomorrow. I got to do it tomorrow because he gave it to me. I know he's going to be looking to see the video. All right. Now, James P. Manon is going to do any promos he's got. Oh, I won't be doing any show this uh, Sunday because I'll be I'll be at my sister's house for the uh, July Fourth uh, extravaganza. Uh, she's cooking yeah. up a she's cooking up a storm again. Like she stay did. stay cool, my friend. Try to stay hydrated. Stay cool. Yeah, well, she's got some, she's got icy cold central air conditioning in her house. And uh, she's got the barbecue uh, hooked up to the natural gas in the back. And, uh, yeah, so I'll be eating pretty good since she's a great cook. And uh, I'll be seeing my brother-in-law's crazy critters, you know, his giant his constrictor snake and all of his tarantulas and scorpions and such. And his giant, his big African bullfrog that eats young chickens and uh, uh, thought out rats. So I'll, I'll be having a nice, uh, of course I'll take, you know, I'll take some videos. Uh, so I won't be doing any show. And uh, that's about it really. I'll have to postpone it to the, to the following uh, Sunday. I remember the video you made when you and your sister were having Easter dinner. I think some other people were having Easter dinner at a restaurant, an Italian restaurant. Yeah, that was an Italian restaurant called uh, Tiramisu, naturally named after the dessert. Uh, and it's owned by Central Americans, and the cooks are Central American, believe it or not. <laughs> they're, 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 si, senor. No, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do a little Gabriel Salayas. Yes, si, senor Agave. Agave is very good. It's cheap shit, but it's very good. No, <laughs> no, it's uh, they're good. They're good Italian cooks. What can I say? I mean, uh, from, from yeah. hey, from Central, good Italian cooks from Central America. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, look at the Chinese. I I used to go to the my hometown to the Lodi buffet, and they had Italian food that tastes just like my grandmother made. They can, people can learn anything. If if they put their mind to it and focus, if they're well. If they're willing to learn, yeah. If they're willing yeah. to learn, anybody could learn to do anything. The, the the people that make some of the best pizza are are from Central America around here. You know, they learn how to make pizza. They open up their own place. You know, pizzeria. What, what's the song by Billy Joel? Anytime you want a New York Italian restaurant. Da -da -da -da. A bottle of red, a bottle of white. <laughs> well, well, you know, uh, not to change the subject, but I won't, I won't dwell on it. Like certain people from Ohio, wink, wink, nod, nod. Uh, I. Uh, All right. <laughs> there is a science to uh, the making authentic uh, pizza dough. It's not just dough. You got to rise it, and then you got to knead it. And you got to rise it again. It's high gluten flour, same as bagels, but they boil their dough before they make the bagels. So high gluten flour, rise, knead, rise, knead, over and over. And you know when you taste the crust of this one place, it tastes like you're eating really good bread. Wow, you know, artisan bread. Even even the crust of the pizza has flavor. So. Uh, it's not. It's not like you know a Domino's commercial or uh, uh, that guy that doesn't, doesn't say he's not obligated to do anything for his employees. Papa John. It's not like them uh, or frozen pizza. It's uh, there's a science to it, um, and um, 
And then if you, if you got a, a wood burning brick oven, people don't realize you can't walk away from that. You have to keep on rotating your food in the brick in the wood burning oven because the heat, the, the, the wood is on one side and the heat's coming from one direction. So you got to keep rotating it. But it right. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Yeah. There's a girl at, I was talking about Mathern's. There's a girl at Mathern's name. I say a girl. She's about 20. Sick. But to me, anybody under 40 is a girl. But um, she takes this bread. All right. So she takes this bread and she makes the, takes the dough. And she gets it all ready. And then she takes cheese. And mm. she layers the cheese all over the bread. Wow. Then she puts the bread in the oven for a long time. And then mm. she makes this cheesy bread. Wow. Now, they got these government regulations where if it goes past date, you can't sell it um, for the normal price. So, although it's ridiculous because she had it in this, this Mylar bag. But she had the bread the other day for a dollar fifty. Wow. So you know what I did? Grab it. I grabbed it. And I know you would too. Now she also makes this with jalapeno slices. So she calls it jalapeno cheese bread. So that's an artisan bread. That's what they call a real artisan bread. Yes, yeah, she bakes it in the oven. And during the pandemic last year, I had there were people coming into that store saying, I'm looking for Wonder Bread. Look, they're looking for Wonder Bread. And well, you know, the, Wonder Bread, the Wonder Bread was gone in like two hours. So they tell them the people, there's a girl, Elena, she's baking fresh bread right now. It's about to come out the oven. This is what the customers say. I don't eat that brand. You know like, what? Like there's a brand called Fresh Bread Out the Oven. Like that's a brand, you know. Let me tell you something. Her her artisan bread compared to Wonder Bread is like comparing spam to aged grass fed black Angus ribeye steak. There is no comparison to Wonder Bread. It, 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 listen, if they like Wonder Bread, then you know they they belong in a in a I don't know in a shack somewhere out in the in the middle of the bayou. They would rather go home without any bread than to buy anything that was not Wonder Bread, even though this stuff that she was making was hot out of the oven in a paper bag, hot to the touch. You could not even touch it. It was so hot. The human race. Oh, oh, super volcano at Yellowstone. Where, when are you going to blow, please? I can't get over how the human race really is. For, uh, Mr. Fart Doctor. Could you figure? Could you figure the all those humanoids out? I can't. All right. Well, the anyway. beverage ramble dropped off, but he has computer problems sometimes. So, um. Anyway, any last comments? Because we're going to close it out. We got uh, Fandango Friday coming Friday night, and I have Pink Whitney. And there's a logical answer for the reason that it's called Pink Whitney. I did my research. Well, I'll be there. I'll be there. What, what was that? The four tops or the temptations? I'll be there. Uh, uh, um, yeah. So I, I got a whole heap and helping of little bottles. Uh, at least five Fandango Fridays under uh, under my wing. Uh, speaking of wing, what is this with this United States currency? The quarter, the, the back of it is an upside down pack. You, I mean, what, what's going on? I don't so, know. Yeah, so anyway, I'll be there. Uh, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 5.30 p.m. Central Time, Fandango Friday. Right. This is Friday, Fandango Friday. I have something. I don't know a thing about it except why it's called that. So whether it's, whether it's going to be any good. I, next Wednesday's theme, well, we might not be able to do next Wednesday. Next Wednesday may not happen, but uh, the next theme coming up is going to be, I mean, um, on July the the fourteenth, uh, and it's going to be sock. Examine any sake brand, 
any Saki brand. Win Saki Buckle Down. Whatever the hell that song meant. But anyway, I will go, uh, I will go to the Mitsua Japanese market and do the eeny meeny miny mo and pick out a Saki. It's yeah, probably I'll, Yeah, go ahead. No, no, I'll go to Martin Wine Cellar or Trader. I think I might go to Trader Joe's and see what if there has a Trader Joe's brand sake. I have a feeling there is, you know. You never know with Trader Joe's. Uh, I, uh, it's either going to be at, at the Japanese market. It's either going to be a dry sake or a sweet sake. Sweet uh, sake, yeah. Yeah, uh, and to 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 pick one over the other, nah, nah they're both good. They're just both different. Different. they're just different. They're just different. Um, but there are sakis out there that are pricey, just like there are tequilas that you never heard of and rums that you never heard of and uh um you know japanese whiskeys that are very pricey to say the least you know there's a lot there's a lot out there that do not advertise nationally or internationally that are great products they just don't advertise right they may not have the money they don't have the money. Uh, it's okay. They, they could be small family-owned businesses that um, have not yet been approached by any fat cats to sell out. I'm you not know. sure about the 21st, Joe. I'm not sure about July 21st because John Nilly wanted to do red wine, but he oftentimes cannot actually join. Like tonight, he had his uh, ready-to-drink can cocktail, but he couldn't join. So if I don't hear from him on that, I think what we're going to do on the 21st is we're going to have something called Wednesday Wild Card. Wednesday Wild Card. Ah, right. Wednesday Wild Card instead of the other way around. Yeah, that, other, that other thing. We, which we uh, that show. Other show, yeah. All right. So thanks, everybody, for watching this video production. And join us in two, two days for Fandango Friday. Mm -hmm. Day, day. James, gonna, James is going to close us out with a musical accompaniment. Accompaniment. Arr. You have just walked the plank from the show. Kindly expedite the premises, people. <laughs> <laughs>